Hi, this is Jimmy from The Productive Engineer, and today I'm going to share with you some of the tips and tricks I've picked up over time using Notion. So let's just jump right into the first tip. Okay, so let's get into our first tip. The first tip here is the ability to have anchor links. And what anchor links are is the ability to create a link to one of your headings inside of one of your Notion pages that can serve as like a jump link to that particular section. I find myself using this often when I uh, want to reference some information I know is in another page. And I just want to create a link reference in another part of Notion that I can click on and then come to this page. So let's say I wanted to create a reference to this section here, Consequences of Lexical Scoping. What I would do here is I would just come over here to this section right here, click on this double ellipses here, this vertical double ellipses right here. I'll click the Copy Link button. Now I have that link on my de on clipboard. I'm going to go over here to test page. I come down here and let's say I'm saying, I was just typing some text and I'll say, there are some consequences to lexical scoping. Like I was just typing up a document and I was like, I remember that there is some, so I'm going to come here, highlight this text, click link, the link button right here. I'll paste in my link click link and now I have a link here you can see there are some consequences to electrical scoping and when I click that it'll take me directly to the section of my notion page uh, that I'm referencing uh, a lot of note-taking applications these days are taking advantage of deep linking and interlinking notes to create relationships between your pieces of data and this allows you to do it inside of notion so when you're working in one page and you notice data in another page that you want to ultimately reference you can go to that other page create copy that link and then paste it into the uh, another section of notion or even into another um, application and bring that app bring that specific section of notion up so that's a really cool quick way to sort of reference information without having to retype it and duplicate it so on to our second tip okay for our second tip is is using the quick find functionality to see the last couple of pages you've been working on so a lot of times you'll be working in notion and you want to go back to a specific page or two or three pages back from where you were um you know from what you're currently working on and rather than sort of navigating the, the structure of notion what you can actually do is go up here in the left hand panel under quick find and just click quick find and you'll notice that your recent pages come up as well as your recent searches so if you want to redo a search you can just reclick the search like if I was looking for CBind, I can click CBind and it's going to you know, come up with all the places where that shows up. Or I can come over here, click Quick Find again. I can go to, I can delete that out. And then let's say you can see the last X amount of pages I was on. Let's say I was looking for my connections to the, this connections page. I can click that. It takes me directly to that page. So if you know you worked on a page earlier in the day, it's probably going to show up in your recent pages unless you've worked on a ton of pages. Your last X amount of pages are going to show up there. So quick and easy way to not only just use the search functionality but also your recent searches and your recent pages i use it often to just kind of toggle back to pages i was just working on uh, you can also alternately if you just if it's like one or two pages back you can use the left arrow up here to go back or command and then the, the um, open bracket here i can hit that and go back one go back two, uh, go forward as well by hitting to go forward which is command and the close bracket twice or simply I can go back and then here if I want to go back forward and go forward I can click forward again so a couple different ways you can navigate quickly between pages that you've just recently worked on these arrows are not specific to going back and forth from page to sub page it goes back and forth from the last page you're on to the current page you're on so it, it keeps a history of all the pages that you've been working on and you can go toggle back and forth through them let's go on to tip number three Tip number three, we're going to use the turn into functionality within Notion. A lot of times you have something typed, you might have something typed in Notion and you realize that you really want to turn that, like a text block, for example, you might have a bunch of things typed out. You want to turn that into something else rather than sort of selecting each piece. What you can actually do here is just come select all of it and then right click. And then you have this turn into option and then you can turn it into a variety of things. Obviously by default it's text, but you can turn them into headers, you can turn them into separate pages. Um, you can turn them into a to-do list. In this case, I have a bunch of different things. So if you look here, I have pick up laundry detergent, plan for world domination and pizza tonight, question mark. So what I'm going to do is to turn that into a to-do list by just coming here, hit to turn into to-do list. And guess what? Now they're all 
um, to do's. So a quick and easy way to transform from one block to another block. Obviously there are some limits, so I would ex I would recommend playing around with it. But if you just you're quickly whipping out a list, you can you know you write a bunch of things down. You realize that the last four or five lines of what you wrote should really be a to-do list or a bulleted list or something like that. You can highlight that section and just turn it into that. So another quick and easy way to sort of manipulate text inside of Notion. Now, before we go on to the next tip, if you like this video, please click the like button. It really does help out my channel. It helps my channel to grow and tell YouTube it's worth subscribing to. Speaking of which, if you like these videos, please consider subscribing. All I do is make tutorials on applications like Notion. And um, as a matter of fact, if you're looking for a primer on Notion, I recommend you highly that you watch my beginner's guide to Notion. It covers everything in Notion from the basics all the way to the to pretty advanced concepts. And by the end of it, you should be able to master, be, feel very comfortable with Notion and be able to get what you need to get done, done. So I'm going to link that above. So if you uh, have some time and you're looking to you know, either brand new to Notion or you're looking to just brush up on your skills, I'd recommend checking out that video. And lastly, if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. Thanks. Now on to our next tip. Okay. So we talked about manipulating text in the last tip, but in this tip, I'm going to actually show you how to format text without having to use your mouse. And the way you do that is by writing it in Markdown. Markdown is a uh, flexible markup language that allows you to quickly and easily add formatting to your, to your type to your text without having to right click and select and do all that stuff. So I could do things, for example, like if I want to make a, a heading, I could hit the pound space and that creates a heading. I say, this is a markdown heading right and i can hit enter and then i can do a second heading here by just hitting pound pound and i can make a, a level two heading say um subheading and then i could do like this is bolded oh i just did italicized it's bolded text right that's uh by just simply hitting typing two asterisks before and after the word i want to bold and I'll do that again. So, so asterisk, asterisk, bold text. And then when I want to close it off, two more asterisks. And guess what? That's all bolded. If I want to do italicized text, I can just do one. I always spell italicized wrong for some reason. Text here, for example, and hit the asterisk again. So a single asterisk at the beginning and end of what you want italicized will italicize it um, as well. You can do a bullet list by simply hitting the uh, asterisk space and that creates a bulleted list. I can say item one, item two, and then enter twice to get out of it. And then let's say I wanted to do a numbered list. Number dot space, item one, item two. I can hit tab, create, you know, sub item one. And then I can hit enter, enter in backspace and get out of that. So really quick way of sort of formatting text as you go without having to you have the latency of okay now let's select the text i want and then i'm going to do something with it i actually have a detailed tutorial on markdown which i will link up above for all the things you can do inside of notion with markdown but um this is a quick and easy way especially if you're typing out very long notes and you just want you know you want to format it as you go without having to you know, without having to take your fingers off the keyboard i'm a very keyboard oriented person so if there's something i can do on a keyboard with a shortcut or some kind of formatting structure i would prefer to do that rather than have to right click and then select and do all that stuff so on to the next tip okay so we're going to talk about breadcrumbs here and breadcrumbs you can actually see them up here on the top of the page it basically shows you a the page structure of what your current document is. So here I have my list block tutorial page, which is inside the personal projects page. If I come here to data science and I can go into here into our programming and then come here to our objects and attributes, you can see that each time I do that, there is a breadcrumb, right? It basically shows you the path all the way from personal projects all the way to my current page. Right? And so if I go here, I can actually see that page here. It, it actually uses an ellipses that there's more than it represents here. But let's say I'm at the bottom of the page and I want to create a breadcrumb. Maybe, maybe, you know, I just want to have that quick breadcrumb here. I can actually type slash bread and I can see this advanced block that says breadcrumb show the current page location. If I click that, you can see here that now I have this breadcrumb 
in my page. So actually, if I'm down here working, like doing something, I can actually say, well, you know, I need to go back to, I want to have this breadcrumb here so I can go back to data science if I want to, just from right, from right there. So breadcrumbs are really cool for sort of helping you navigate through your page structure because as your notion becomes more complicated, you use it more, you have more and more pages and sub pages, it's very easy to get lost in sort of where you are inside of notion in terms of what sub page you're on or what page and stuff like that. So breadcrumbs can be very helpful in that regard. Next, let's talk about adding pages and pinning pages to the top of your notion. Obviously there might be some pages that you use regularly and rather than have to cycle through them every time, you know, navigate the, the structure here on your left hand side to sort of go through and like, let's say, for example, I have uh, personal projects and then I, you know, I'm looking for something in data science and I'm looking for something down here in our studio and packages. And as you can see, you can get very deep. And if that's a page I use often, I don't want to have to navigate that every time. So what I would do instead is add the page as a favorite. And the way you do that is actually very easy. So let's say um, I will have the getting help page, which is actually, no, let's not use that because that has nothing on it. Uh, let's say I'm using my <laughs> syllabus, course and syllabus page of my um, of my course I'm taking, and I want to add that as a favorite. All I have to do here is go to favorites over here in the upper right-hand corner, click that, and then over here you'll see that that page got added as a favorite. So now I don't have to navigate all the way through. I don't have to come in here, you know, I don't have to excuse me, come down here to personal projects and then go to data science and then, uh, you know, all the way through. Now I just click here instead and I go right to my course syllabus. And I would recommend you do that for the handful of pages that you use regularly, that you reference regularly. It really is a time saver and it allows you, you know, having pinned pages really does save you time in terms of navigation. Okay, the next page, the next tip is a quick and easy way to highlight a line or a, you know, a, some information inside of a um, Notion page. As you know, you can highlight text by doing things like just highlighting the text and then coming over and clicking on the text button and then going down to backgrounds. But that is a long way to do it. This whole page right here, excuse me, I actually could come here and type in slash. And I can type in yellow, I how to spell yellow. And I can come here to yellow background of course, it would help if I put the in part. And now this whole section here, for example, is yellow. Let's try this again. So let's say if I wanted the grading policy, let's say I wanted this to be yellow as well. And I wanted to say, hey, the first quiz is 20%. I can do that. I can actually highlight, yeah, I can come down here to this whole block right here. It's done on a block by block basis. So if I wanted to highlight this whole block, I could do that. I can, if I just wanted to highlight this title, I just want to make this red. I could do red, I could do a red background, and then as you can see, that's now red. So it really works quickly if you're, again, keeping your hands on the keyboard, um, if you're working quickly, you still have the option full of text you want to, within a specific text block that you want to highlight, like this required to set up a GitHub account, and I want to highlight just that piece. Yeah, at that point, I'm going to just take my mouse, highlight that text, come over here to the text color, and go down to, let's say I want to make that green. And now it's highlighted in green as an example. But if you want to highlight a whole block or a header, um, it really, typing the slash and then the color you want will get you there quicker. This tip has to do with toggling and untoggling toggles. Wow, well, that's a mouthful. Basically, toggle lists are allow you, are these little things here that you can open and close and create, put blocks inside of a toggle list. And the nice thing about them is you can open and close them based upon when you want to see them again. But what if you have a toggle list and you want to close all of them at once? Well, fortunately, there's an easy way to do this is by hitting Command, Option, and T. And as you can see when I do that, or Control, Option, and T in Windows, but Command, Option, and T in, on the Mac will open and close all the toggle lists on a given page that you're that you're currently on. So a really quick and easy way if you just want to close all of them at once. Like I just want to get them all closed and hit Command, Option, T. If I want to open them all up, Command, Option, T to open them back up. So a quick and easy tip there. Saves you a little bit of time. Okay, and for my last tip, it actually has to do with using the Notion Web Clipper. So let's say you have a web page and you want to clip that not only to a specific page within the Notion, but to within a specific list or a table. So what you can do is use the Web Clipper and clicking the Notion Web Clipper icon in your toolbar, 
and then come here, come in here where it says add to, and rather than just lose a page, you could actually come down and let's say you had a table like this list box example table. I could go there and that's a list block and I can hit save. And when I click open in Notion, and go back to my list block example, you can see here how to prep your devices in iOS and 14 and watch OS 7 today shows up inside my list block, not just a generic link on my page, but in a specific table, in this case, a list table. And this is really great if you have a bunch of links that you want to save that are specific to a topic. Like if you're trying to learn guitar or programming or you're clipping recipes or whatever you're looking to do. If you have a table that you want to, you know, keep all those together, rather than just having them loose on a page, you can actually put them in a block. And the nice thing about putting them in a list block or a table block is then you can assign attributes to each one of them. So I can sit here and say, well, this came from, I can actually come in here, for example, on this page, click, click it open, and I can add a tag and call it Lightpacker, for example. Create that tag. And now, later on, when I come out here, you can see that tag's here. And let's say that this one was also a life hacker, right? And I can come here and say a life hacker, for example, and close out. And I have two in life hacker. The nice thing about this now is I can sort my list based upon that, and I can filter it. I can say, I, let's say I wanted to add a filter. I can come in here and say add a filter where tag contains life hacker, and then now I'll only see the things that have the life hacker tag. So it really, it simplifies the way that you use notion in terms of saving links and then being able to reference those links and add metadata to those links. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope you learned some tips and tricks that were really good. If you have any tips and tricks that I didn't cover that you think are really cool, put them in the comments. I'm always looking to learn more. If there's any questions you have about notion comment away, I read my comments and respond back to my people that to take the time to write me. So that'd be great. If you again, if you like this video, please click the like button. It really does help out my channel. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos from me, please click the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. Thanks.